I'm back to read more Pete the Cat stories with you from my Pete the Cat storybook. It has a bunch of stories in it. Today, I'm going to start off by reading one called Pete the Cat Valentine's Day is Cool. Do you guys know what Valentine's Day is? It's a day, it's a holiday that we celebrate. It's for the day of love. Are you guys ready to get started? It was the day before Valentine's Day, and Pete was riding his skateboard home. On the way, he saw his friend Callie. She was holding a big red heart that said, Love! Have you finished your Valentine's Day cards? asked Callie. No, Valentine's Day is not cool, Pete said. <gasps> I wonder why he thinks it's not cool. Oh, Pete, Valentine's Day is my favorite holiday. Mine too. It's a day to tell people how special they are to you, Callie insisted. Pete skated on, but something in the back of his mind told him that Callie might be right. By the time Pete got home, he had decided that Callie was right about Valentine's Day. So he got out his pencils, paper, crayons, and markers and sat down at the kitchen table. First, Pete started to work on a card for his friend Larry. Pete made several cards with big red hearts, but he was not happy with his work. Pete wanted to make the perfect card for every cat in his class. I'll never get all these cards done in time, Pete told his mom. Pete's mom smiled. Just do your best, she said. Just tell Larry why he is cool. There is something cool about every cat. Pete got back to work. He thought hard about what was cool about Larry. Perfect, Pete said. After that, it didn't take Pete long to make cards for all the boys. Then Pete made special cards for all the girls and wrote Love Pete on each one. And of course, he made the biggest heart-shaped card for his mom. You see how he made individual cards for everybody? This one's to Larry. I think Larry likes football. This one's to Rob. It has a car on it. This one's to Josh. It has a soccer ball. And this one's to Trey. It has a guitar. The next day, Pete and Callie waited for the bus together. I decided you were right. Valentine's Day is cool. That's awesome, Callie said. By the way, I'm having a Valentine's Day party at my house after school. If you want to come... The bus pulled up, then Pete and Callie got on. Mr. Ted, the bus driver, smiled and said, Good morning. But as soon as they were in their seats, Pete put his head in his paws. What's wrong? asked Callie. I forgot to make a card for Mr. Ted, he cried. Then Pete thought, But I can make him an awesome card before we get to school. He pulled out a piece of paper and color pencils from his backpack. He began to draw. Happy Valentine's Day! Thanks for picking us up every day for school, Pete and Callie said as they handed Mr. Ted his valentine. Thank you, Mr. Ted told them. You just made my day! Oh, look, they made a card for Mr. Ted. He drives the bus. Gets them to school safely every day. What about Mrs. Gold, the crossing guard? We mean to make her a valentine, too! Pete practically shouted. Let's do it, Callie said. Let's make Valentine's for everyone. Pete and got, Callie got super busy making cards for everyone. <gasps> to Mrs. Gold, the crossing guard. Happy Valentine's Day to the policeman. Happy Valentine's Day to the fireman or firewoman or policewoman too. Happy Valentine's Day to the librarian. After school, Pete went to Callie's party. He rang the bell and then froze. Callie opened the door only to find her friend in a panic. <gasps> I wonder why Pete was panicked. What's wrong, Pete? I forgot something very important, Pete admitted. What? Callie asked. I just realized I forgot to make you to make a card for you. Pete said, That's okay, Pete. Cards are just a way of showing you care. Hanging out with you, that's way better than any card. This is the best Valentine's Day ever. And look, they're sharing some cake that says love on it for Valentine's Day to celebrate. 
Happy Valentine's Day to you. Love, Pete. I liked that story. The next one that I wanted to share with you, I think you guys are going to like this one. Pete the Cat, Cave Cat Pete. <gasps> I see some dinosaurs. Cave Cat Pete wakes up early. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. Today is going to be a great day, Pete thinks. But Pete's bed starts to shake. His friend Vinny, the Velociraptor, is coming to visit. It's a perfect day for a picnic, says Vinny, so excited that he jumps on Pete's bed. What a great idea, says Pete. Who should we invite? Everyone, Vinny yells. Vinny does not know how to use his inside voice. Right on, says Pete. Pete loves picnics. He jumps out of his bed to invite all his friends. It's cave cat time, so Pete has to walk everywhere. First, Pete finds his friend, Ethel, the Arachosaurus. To get her attention, Pete climbs all the way up to the top of the tallest tree. Do you see how, how high he had to climb to go talk to his friend, Ethel? First, Pete finds his, uh oh, sorry. Would you like to come to my picnic? Pete asks. I'd love to, says Ethel. Ethel, Ethel, what can I bring? How about a really big salad, Pete suggests. What a great idea, says Ethel. I love salad. I'm on it. Pete wanders along the river. He sees T-Rex. T-Rex plays guitar. T-Rex is awesome. Hey, T-Rex, Pete yells. Want to come to a picnic? Sweet, says T-Rex. Can I bring my guitar? Definitely, says Pete. We can jam. Count on me, says T-Rex. Is it okay if I bring Al, the Allosaurus? She's a whiz on the drums. The more the merrier, says Pete. See you later. Rock on, they say. Pete sees his friend Terry, the pet Pterosaurus, in the sky. Hi, Pete, she calls. Pete invites Terry to the picnic, too. Would you mind giving me a lift, Pete asks. Sure, says Terry. Climb aboard. Pete sees the spiked tail of his main man, Skip, the Stegosaurus. How are you feeling today, Skip? Pete asks. Skip has been sick with the sniffles. Oh, no. Better, says Skip. Thanks for asking. You up for a picnic? I think so, says Skip. I'd hate to miss the fun. It's almost time for the picnic. Cave Cat Pete rushes through the forest. He doesn't want to be late. What will all the dinosaurs talk about if I'm not there? He thinks as he runs. Whoops! Pete trips over his tranny, the Triceratops. Are you okay? asks Pete. Am I okay? asks Trini. I'm fine. I'm a dinosaur. Are you okay? I'm okay, but I'm running a little late. We're playing hide and seek? Trini says before Pete can finish. I think I hit a little too well. Look at her. See her hiding? How long have you been hiding? asked Pete. What day is it today? asked Trini. Pete thinks Trini has been playing hide and seek a little too long. It's the day of our picnic, says Pete. All the dinosaurs are going to be there. Want to come? Do I ever? Maybe someday there will play hide and seek with me, she says. Trini and Pete head to the picnic together. Pete rides on Trini's forehead and holds on to her horns. When they arrive at the picnic ground, everyone is there. Vinny and e Ethel are setting up the picnic tables. T-Rex and Al are warming up to play some tunes. Terry and Trini are playing hide-and-seek. Even Skip seems to be enjoying himself. It doesn't get any better than this, says Pete. <gasps> Look, they're playing some music. Hide-and-seek. There's, there's some salad. Picnic tables. That looks like a lot of fun. T-Rex comes over then. Hey, Pete, he asks. Is there anything to, else to eat? I'm a carnivore. I don't eat salad. Carnivores eat meat. And they only have salad there. Trini comes over. I can't play hide and seek with Terry, Trini says. She's frying around and peeking. Skip comes over. I don't feel so good, he says, and he sneezes. The dinosaurs all start to argue. It is very loud. The picnic will be ruined if Pete doesn't do something. He leans over to Al and says, can you give me a beat? Pete takes out his guitar and he starts to sing. Before long, everyone is having a great time. You know, T-Rex tells Ethel, 
I n never actually tried salad before. Try it, says Ethel. I'll bet you like it. T-Rex tastes the salad. Crunch, crunch, crump. Yum, says T-Rex. This is delicious. Everyone grabs a plate and digs in. That must be one good salad. After lunch is over, everyone wants to keep the picnic going a little bit longer. They decide to play hide and seek. Pete is happy that everyone is getting along. He feels lucky to have such great friends. Now he just has to find them. Where are they hiding? I see one right here. One's up there in the tree. Another one right here, right here, right here. After the game is over, they all cheer. Pete found all the dinosaurs, even Trini. And she's a professional hide and seeker. This was the best picnic ever, everyone says. It was the best picnic because you guys are the best friends ever, Pete says. And no one can argue with that. The end. Thanks for coming to my story time today to share Pete the Cat stories with you guys. I hope to see you soon. Bye, friends. <laughs>